See, you two spoiled it this morning. I was going to say, you all read the gospel lesson before you even came, and nobody sat in the seats of honor. Did you two read the gospel lesson? No, you weren't prepared. But that's normally the way it works, right? This, this row up here closest to me is, is normally empty, right? And you would think that this is the most, right? I'm not saying closer to me is the place of most honor. And, and this is another sermon for another day, but what does this say? And I'm not trying to make anybody here feel bad, but I gotta say it. What does this say about, about the way we work in our lives if the front rows at church are empty? And, and where do we want to sit when we go to a concert or a basketball game or a football game? Or you want to be in the front row, right? I promise I take a shower every Sunday morning, so it's all good. But the lesson this morning from Jesus seems to be just simple manners, right? 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 Don't think more highly of yourself than you should. All right, we're done. Right? That's, I mean, that's what the lesson says. And if you read Proverbs, right, it actually makes Jesus is like correcting Proverbs almost, or it makes it seem like it's just a moral lesson here. And this is way more, way more than a moral lesson. But we have to understand, you have to understand the way that the system worked. And it still works this way today, even though we won't acknowledge it, right? When you have a party, who do you invite? Your friends, family, relatives, neighbors, business associates, right? In Jesus' day, when the Roman society had a party, they would invite people of their same status, their same level in society, Um, If anybody of a lower level got invited to a party, they might accept that, but they would accept it with the understanding that if I go to this party, I'm going to owe somebody something. I got invited not because of who I am, but because somebody thinks that they can get something from me and therefore they're inviting me to this party, so I will give something back to them, right? Quid pro quo, right? I do for you, you do for me. Tit for tat, right? That's the way that that system worked. And you only got invited to parties is if you could help somebody or you were of a higher status of the person who was giving the party. Because if you were of a higher status and you came to my party, I invite you to my party. Say, I invite Scott to my party and Scott comes to my party. That makes me look good because Scott decided to come to my party, right? <laughs> of course, he says. <laughs> Those... Who humble themselves will be exalted, and those who are exalt exalt themselves will be humbled, right? (laughs) Right. I mean, they did this because it helped them in society. It helped them with their status. The thing that we miss here is the story in between. How many of you noticed we skipped over some verses? I don't know why we do this. The lectionary people think that it's important for us to just skip these stories. But this story is actually important because Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath. And they were watching him closely, meaning the people that that were going to be there, the Pharisees and the people, the other people the Pharisee had invited were watching him closely. And just in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy. And Jesus asked the lawyers and the Pharisee, is it lawful to cure people on a Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. And then he said to them, if one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to him. So Jesus is on the way to a meal at a, at a leader of the Pharisee's house on the Sabbath, comes across the man who needs to be healed. Last week we talked about this, you know, six or seven healing stories of Jesus in, the, in Luke, most of them happening on the Sabbath. And here's another one of them. Jesus just heals this man. But here's the thing that you've got to catch on this, right? This man had dropsy. What is that? It's like an... A, edema retaining water yeah it's like retaining water so he's probably pretty big and he's probably somebody that would have gotten ignored the pharisees wouldn't even have looked at him right because he was one of the outside people he's not on the list of those who are to be included but he's the person that jesus sees And he heals him on the Sabbath, which again, you're not supposed to do. And then they go to this party and he sees the people taking these seats and he tells them, don't take the seats up front. 
because you might get asked to move back. So take a lower seat, which actually sounds like pretty good advice, right? I don't want to think too much of myself. I want to look good in front of everybody else, so I'm going to take the lowest seat. And then when, when Scott comes in and sees me sitting in the lowest seat because I invited him to my party, he's going to ask me to get up and come up a little bit closer to the front, right? He'll teach you not to sit. You need to sit behind somebody. <laughs> right? It's that... Don't get put down in front of other people. Be humble and don't exalt yourself. But the question that I have on this not exalting yourself is we've each been given gifts, right? It's time for me to pick on Ruthie. Ruthie's been given the gift of music. I think we would all agree that she's a very wonderful piano player and probably a very well, or, very good organist, which we won't be able to tell so because we don't have an organ. But she's been given a gift, And she should exalt that gift and use that gift and show us that gift. But she also has to be humble about this gift. Right? How do we do that? And not let people walk all over us. And show people the love that God has given to each and every one of us. See, it's about... The sermon title this morning is, Where's the Less? It's about where you put the less. Jesus wants each and every one of us to be humble in ourselves and to be humble in the gifts that we've been given and not make more of ourselves. And and you got to watch this because when you humble yourselves enough, what actually starts to happen? You start to it's that humbling for exaltation. Right. Have you ever seen people that do that? Talk themselves down so much that it makes builds themselves. Yeah. If you haven't, you're lucky. Right. But we don't want to do that either. But it's about where is the less being humble is about who we think about. It's like the two runners I was talking to the kids about. Right. I really should have looked that story up this morning so I knew more details about it. But there was a a race track and field race where two women were at towards the back of the pack and one of them fell and the other one fell on top of the other one. And they kind of tripped each other up. And one turned around and helped the, the first one up. And they started running. And then they looked. The, the one that got helped up looked back. And the one that helped her up was, was kind of like, you know, not running full speed. She was obviously hurt. So the, the one that she helped up turned around and started to help her. And like I said, neither one of them won. Both of them finished. I mean, the simple fact they were in the Olympics is a, is a big deal. But they both finished the race because they helped each other. They thought about the other. You see, humbling ourselves is about where we put the emphasis. To be humble is not to think less of yourself, but it's to think of yourself less. Let me say that again so that we all get it. Being humble is not to think less of yourself, but to think of yourself less. Less. See the difference? Right? It's not about putting myself down saying I can't do this. It's about understanding who I am and the gifts that I've been given. But thinking about how those gifts might help you. Right? Ruthie is here because she is helping us. Now, yes, she does get something out of this. Trust me. I know how much she loves to play and she loves to be here playing. And I'm picking on her this morning. I hope that she doesn't. She doesn't mind that. But she is getting something out of being here and playing for us this morning. But it's also because of fulfilling the need, knowing the gifts that she has and helping us out in the, in the, the point that we're at of having somebody here to accompany us for worship. It's about thinking of other people more than yourself. Right? And that's where Jesus gets to at the end here with, when he turns around and talks to the host and he says, when you have a dinner... Don't invite your family. Don't invite your friends. Don't invite your business colleagues. Don't invite those who can pay you back. But invite instead. And this, is, this list is, is for a reason. The poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Why the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind? Specifically. These four groups. 
Remember what I said about the man with dropsy? He's ignored and passed over by everybody else. The poor, the lame, the crippled, and the blind are people that are a drag on their families and a drag on society. They're the ones that are overlooked and ignored by everybody else. They're the ones that have absolutely nothing and they can give you nothing in return. But that's what Jesus is telling us here. It's not about what we get from anybody else for what we do for them. It's about us doing for them and knowing that God is going to take care of us. Because it's not about us getting back from others. It's about us understanding how richly God has blessed us. And in turn being a blessing for them. Right? It's not about what I can get from who I invite. But it's about me giving back what God has given to me. One of the children's sermon illustrations I looked at this week was that of a slinky. And I think it's a great illustration even for adults, right? If you've, you've all played with a slinky before, if not, go to the dollar store and buy them. They call them magic springs at the dollar store, but they're still slinkies. It's okay. <laughs> right? You get a slinky and you, you find a set of steps. Right? This one would work, but it wouldn't be quite as good. You need a tall set of steps so you can watch this. And you start it on the top, right? And you flip it, and then what does it do? It flips again, and then it flips again. What, Lynn? <laughs> it's the commercial. I'm going to bring you up front and have you sing it for us. No. Right? It, it comes down, and then it looks like it's going to sit, right, for a split second. It's like bound up on itself, but there's, there's energy in it, and it keeps going. And that's God's grace coming and us giving God's grace coming and us giving. God's grace coming and us. You see how that works? God's grace flows into us and we flow it out. If you don't flow it out, it still comes. It's just going to back up. And you don't want to get backed up with anything. (laughs) But God continually graces us in our lives so that we can be a blessing to others. And it's not about us being a doormat and letting people walk all over us. It's about us thinking about others first and helping them to grow as disciples too. Showing them the love that God has for them. So remember not to think less of yourself, to think less of yourself, but to think of yourself less and to give to others the grace that God has given to you.